In Part 3, we looked at how we use our gaze to focus our attention. Now, we'll look at what we actually focus on. At first, players fixate on the ball. All eyes follow it no matter what. Then, players become aware of other players. Basic teamwork and opposition situations are recognized. Finally, players become aware of space. Concepts like the distance between objects gain significance. While these targets for our attention are out there, it takes an active search to find them. This search, including gaze control, is controlled by the pre-attentive filters in part two. Our visual system is part camera, taking in the scene, and part projector, illuminating different screens. The pre-attentive filters search the environment for meaningful targets. These targets exist in two categories, concrete and abstract. Within these categories are four types. Objects are concrete, the physical things that move in the game teammates, opponents, the ball, and referee. Locations can be concrete or abstract. Concrete locations are places or things that do not move and are used as a reference point. Examples are the penalty area, near post, far post, the midfield line, corner flag, and so on. Abstract locations are transitory reference points like the offsides line, blind side, goal side, between, and so on. Systems are an abstract relationship between two or more objects that depends on communication, mutual understanding, cooperation, and relative proximity. These include systems of play, a player with the ball, two central defenders, the back four, 1v1s, and so on. As targets, objects in concrete locations are entities. They represent what is or was and not what might be. Probabilities require anticipation, a concern with future states. Seeing targets accurately and quickly as what might be is a key in rapid decision making. It's at this last level that the complexity of the visual search really gets going. In a game, objects, systems, locations, and probabilities have a dynamic, nested and hierarchical relationship. Soccer is dynamic because it's an event. It exists in time. The objects and locations share transient, evolving relationships. Targets are nested because they contain other targets. Experienced players can dig deeper, faster, and extract more meaning out of the same scene than a novice player. There is a relative, perishable value in each target. Not only do you want to find a high value target, but you want to dump one that's tanking. We'll conclude this video with a model for visual attention learning. Over time, a player should progress from a concrete orientation of the game to a more complex and abstract orientation. This journey will be constrained by his or her genetic heritage, cultural traditions, and experience. In part five, We'll continue this look at targets and introduce workspaces.